All right, for this video, I wanted to do a tutorial on how I uh, generate my drum break samples uh, not using any paid plugins. So a lot of plugins that I'm gonna use for this are free or uh, stock plugins. I am in Ableton, so a lot of this will be Ableton specific, but there are analogs to these things in the other uh, DAWs that we saw. So what I have here is I have this drum track uh, from that little sample in the intro. Uh, so the drum track by itself sounds like this. So then I rendered part of this down here in the sample. So it's just that same thing again for these two measures here. But then, um, especially with, with when I'm doing drum breaks, and a lot of times I'll do this with the other ones too, all those are part of the reason why I often do the other breaks with Glitch too. But if I'm doing it for free, uh, I want to get a shuffle first because I want to mix up these, and I don't feel like doing it manually. And I also like making it kind of random so I don't really know what to expect. And then it's a surprise that I can pick and choose which bits I like and get rid of the ones we don't need. So um, what I've put together here in this uh, shuffle group is the first thing I have is this plugin called GateLab. And I apologize. Oh. He says here, look at this. Oh, Mario Nieto. Um, Audio Modern, that's right. That's the name of the group, company, whatever it is that makes scale. I guess it's anyway. a company. So GateLab is free, um, and there's a lot of cool things you can do with it. I have this set to random, so it's gonna change the gating uh, every five of these little um, lengths. So those are sixteenths, so every five sixteenths, and then it'll shuffle to a new layout of this, and so it randomizes it a little bit. And so what this will do is it'll start cutting out some of the original drum bits, so it just leaves me, leaves me with pieces. So now it's already a little bit different, but I don't want them all in the same spot because like I could just just gate it or just you know throw a just manually cut out some pieces if I wanted to do that. So the next thing I want to do is I want to basically create a shuffler to repeat or or um, uh, shift some of the samples. And so I'm actually going to do this because it, essentially this gator is cutting them up into samples. And so then um, I'm actually going to do both. I'm going to do part of it to give it a nice shift. And then I'm going to do a shorter delay to get some um, extra repeats in there. So if I do just the, um, the gator, it did sound like this originally. And so then if I turn on the gator, So we cut some of that out. Um, got myself a little sidetracked there for a second. So um, I like to do two delays. It kind of mixes it up a little bit more. You can really just throw one delay on there, especially if you like ping pong it or do sort of, they're not um, uh, blocked between uh, left and right channel. You get some fun effects even with just one delay in there. But so I'm just using, I got it, the stock delay here in Ableton, use whatever delay makes sense to you uh, with whatever you're working with or whatever you like. But I like it because it's pretty simple and it is a pretty clean delay. Um, default doesn't have a ton of extra like uh, modulation or anything weird changes to what's coming out of it. So you can have a pretty dry copy of what's really the wet copy now because we've delayed it. Um, and so I decided on this one, I'm gonna do this a little bit longer. So 5 sixteenths. Um, and that's, so that's going to delay everything and it, it creates some syncopation too when you do it off like that. You can do it right on and that can be really fun too because sometimes then you'll get samples that double up in ways that create um, more pop or you know create more dynamic sounds as you double up or don't double up in various places. Anyway, I digress. So then um, I like to randomize when it's on and when it's off. You can add extra feedback. It starts to get sloppier when you do that, which might be what you want, but I'm gonna kind of show a cleaned up version of this. I'm gonna do zero percent feedback. So um, if I run it at 50%, then we're gonna hear all the dry signal and then all of just one copy on the delay. And then I have this on binary, uh, which is a pseudo random, or it's a, like a, a binary random, binary probability of either on or off. 
And I have this set so that either I've got um, just 100% dry, so we don't have any delay signal coming through, so it's just whatever came out of the gator. Um, and it goes to 50%, so I'll get the double. So I'll get this extra beat that kicks in once in a while. Now, it's kind of funny because the buffer on this delay is taking everything in anyway. So even if it's off, when it turns back on, it already has things buffered in from 5 16 notes before it turned back on again, and those can show up. So you, you create some added um, beats in there when you do that. So that'll sound like this. So if you recall, um, it was relatively simple, just some stuff cut out a little bit. And then we add this back in. And so you get this extra shuffle in there, which is kind of neat. And so then, uh, what I also like to do, oh, and I, I set this to sync. You could make it off if you wanted, which would kind of make things a little funkier in the way that it cuts the, the samples coming out of GateLab. Um, or you can sync it to however essentially um, quickly you wanted to start cutting back and forth, and it'll do it right on clean um, note lengths. Uh, so then after that, I'm going to do a, a delay out here that's shorter. And so I'm going to use this just to create some uh, repeats. And so this is going to go back and forth between zero and 100 percent. Actually, this one's going to create the sh more of the shift and shuffle. But so it just gets this extra oomph to a lot of these. Um, and I keep it pretty clean, too. I decided to do one eighth there. Um, and this is also on that binary probability output. And it's neat because it'll get you when it turns on and stays on for a minute. It'll hit with the whole, like everything that came through, it's doubling as it comes through. So you, sometimes when it turns on for a little bit more, you'll get a couple run throughs where you get some neat shit coming out of it. This. And again, I, I decided zero feedback on this, so we just get the one extra copy for every copy that comes in. Um, or actually, I guess it doesn't. It just really just shifts it. But So it moves all that stuff to the other side of um, the previous note at whatever length. So that gives me my shuffle. And then if um, sometimes I'll just actually run that. Let me do that real quick. Uh, let's do this. And we'll resample this baddie. And let's go. Okay. Um, and then sometimes I like to throw some effects. So for stuff like this, one of my faves is uh, some redux on here. And so one of the things I like to do with the redux is uh, randomize. This is just a regular random one. So you can be at any point. It's like a, uh, what do you call that? Uh, continuous random probability coming out of here. And then I'll, I'll, I'll uh, map this to this rate right here. So it's changing the different frequencies of the, the sample reduction. And you know you pick a range that you like that gets kind of the sound you're looking for. And then I like to have some smooth on there um, because otherwise you get this. Everything's got a static amount of distortion to it. But if I go back to this smooth here, it eases into them. So you get the whole transition. So it just makes it a little bit, you know, tastier as it comes out of there. And then the other thing I've done here, this is, I don't always do this. Sometimes I just go ahead and just leave it with the random as it is, is I decided I wanted to kind of change how often, like how quickly this random thing moves. And so this is uh, mapped to the rate right here, and I have it set so that it'll oscillate between one eighth notes and one sixth, or one in quarter notes. So you see it's bouncing back and forth here between one eighth and, and a quarter. This is just changing sort of the rate at which that distortion is is being affected by this LFO I've created here. And so then another thing I like to um, do a lot of times is some kind of uh, frequency modulation or frequency um, shifting. So I decided uh, we could leave this in just regular shift mode. And so just, if we do that, everything that's coming in now is going to be oscillating sort of randomly um, through some different raises in frequency. And again, I just picked a range I liked. I decided I wanted it to only go from various 
points of rising or increasing the shift, uh, but you can go for both sides of it or decrease the shift only just depending on kind of watching. So if we do that, it sounds like this. So you can hear it shifting um, the, the frequency there. And then the other thing I did here too is I added this LFO to just turn the dry wet on. So that way it's not always shifting the frequency. Sometimes you're getting just the distortion. Sometimes I'm getting the distortion that's shifted. When I was looking through this earlier, I actually liked it better using the ring modulator instead. And so it just sounds like this with all the same effects. Or, uh, with all the same um, parameters that I just had before. So now we have um, some effects on there and uh, we could render that too. Uh, and then this is sort of an optional thing, but sometimes I'll add an additional gate onto it. I like to use GateLab for this. It's just a straight auto gator. This is just, I really like the interface and how quickly and easily I can get to this. Like in this case right here, if I wanted these to be cleaner samples that were cut, cutting out of it so that I could uh, work with them just a little bit more cleanly after after we generate these new samples, um, I can just throw this gator on it. So I'm like, okay, I only want these in 16th notes and I want them broken up a little bit. So without that gator, it's still pretty clean. So in this case, I probably wouldn't even use it, but we can tighten it up a little bit more, get rid of some of the extra stuff so that there's not as much to have to comb through. So then you can hear them coming in a little bit more regularly when we do that. And so now we have this other full uh, now we have this full uh, new set of samples that we can render and, and pull from and then and we put some shuffle on there. And we can do multiple ones, especially because it's randomized. And so we could just render this several times through, like just resample it and then do resample a new run, resample a new run, and they're all going to be a little bit different because of the randomization built into that. So then you can get as many samples as you want, as clean as you want. Um, relatively quickly. All right, so cool. That's the whole thing. Fuck with it. What do you think?